Welcome today to the house of God. We are in the season of Lent. We are in that 40 day period when we are journeying uh, to the cross of Christ Jesus. As we begin our worship today, we do so in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I direct you to our call to worship. If you're following along, you can join with me. Otherwise, I invite you just simply to listen to these words. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions, According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake. Join me as we proclaim our common faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins before God, our Father. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is chained to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have remained silent. We were silent when we should have spoken up. We acted when we knew we shouldn't. We have failed to love you with our whole heart and failed to love our neighbor as ourselves. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved your chosen and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is our gospel reading. begin our sermon, we do so with a prayer. We pray. Merciful and gracious God, creator of all things, we are blessed today to gather in your house, to hear your word, to rejoice at the good news of life through Jesus Christ. As we begin the season of Lent, Lord, I pray that you would guide and direct us. Prepare our hearts to receive the good news of Easter at the end of these 40 days. Lord, bless 
my words today and open the hearts of those who are joining wherever they may be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I think about prayer, I immediately picture Jesus. And I guess the reason for this is because Jesus spent a lot of time praying. He often went off on his own to pray, but he also took time to pray with his followers. Jesus even gave us the Lord's Prayer as a model by which we can pray ourselves. For these reasons, whenever we talk about prayer, we tend to begin and also end with Jesus. But Jesus isn't the only individual who ever prayed. In fact, there are many biblical figures who prayed themselves, and some of these prayers are incredible. In fact, our reading for today is from Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. It's a prayer of Moses. I'm going to share it with you in just a moment, but I have to tell you before we do that, today we're beginning a new sermon series that will focus on some of the prayers of the Old Testament. Now let me share with you that first prayer that we're looking at, Exodus 15, verses 1 through 11. It's a portion of a prayer that Moses prayed. Here's what it says. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. You sent out your fury and consumed them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up, the flood stood up in a heap, the deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? That's our reading today. As I hear these words, I can't help but get a little bit excited. The reason why is because Exodus 15 contains the oldest poem in the Bible. Now, this poem is more than 3,000 years old. And so it's for us, it's like interacting with a, a bit of a piece of, of history. According to verse 1, if you were listening carefully, Moses and the Israelites joined in singing these words, it says, this poem. Now, because prayer is a conversation with God, it can take many forms. And so in the case of Exodus 15, prayer, it seems to me, takes the form of, of a poem. And this poem is a prayer of celebration. So from this prayer, we learn that Moses and the people were celebrating because God is present. 
celebrating the presence of God. I want you to think about back to your days in middle school. Is there anything that especially stands out to you about middle school? Do you remember some of the things that I remember, like fashion styles or lack thereof? Or how about all the rumors and gossip? How about hallway monitors? I don't know if your school had hallway monitors back in the day. Or audiovisual teams, people who move projectors or, or televisions around the school. And if your school was anything like mine, then you probably remember those awkward dances. But the one thing that I most remember about middle school was the lost and found. The powers and the authorities in my school had designated a small room as the lost and found. Whenever someone happened to misplace an item, they would be sent to this room to rummage through the unclaimed items. By the end of the school year, the lost and found room was full of things that had been deserted and forgotten. The Israelite people had been in slavery in Egypt for generations. And at some point, I suspect that they began to wonder if God had deserted and forgotten about them. The question they must have been asking themselves is whether or not God was still present with them. But even as they questioned and wondered, God continued to be present with them. God's presence was made visible among other ways, through, through Moses. Moses' words and actions were God's words and God's actions. But God's presence was also made visible when God guided and protected the Israelites as they left Egypt, and he did so with a, a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire traveling before them, protecting them from behind. God's presence remained with the Israelites. When Pharaoh's army began to pursue them and any hope of freedom seemed lost, Moses and the Israelites responded to God's presence with our prayer today. I want you to listen again to the words of Exodus 15, verse 2. As it celebrates God's presence, it says, The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. You know, I know for us there are times when it can feel like God has forgotten all about us. But at these times, Moses' prayer serves as a reminder that God is with us. God's presence with us is made visible through God the Son, through Jesus Christ. Through the cross, Jesus becomes our strength and our might and our salvation. And so like Moses and the Israelites, we can also celebrate because God is present with us. And from this prayer of Moses, we also learn that Moses and the people were celebrating because God is active. They realized that God was active. I don't know about you, 
But I've struggled to stay active during the pandemic. I used to go to stores and movies. I used to go to restaurants, but now I mostly stay at home and don't do a whole lot of anything. Workouts have suddenly become as exciting as an evening out for me. My inactivity had me thinking a lot about sports. And I was especially thinking about strange and obscure sports. And so I, I decided to do a bit of research and I came across a list of some of the more out of the ordinary sports that keep people active. So today I wanted to share a few of these and I, maybe you've heard of them, I doubt it. I doubt it, I'd never heard of any of these. The first one I came across was a sport known as chess boxing. So it combines the board game of chess and the sport of boxing. It is done in a boxing ring and they set up a table and a chess board. And then at some point they actually stop the chess match and then it becomes a boxing match. Um, never heard of that one before. Another one I hadn't heard of was cheese rolling cheese rolling. Maybe you have, if not, cheese rolling is when they take a cheese wheel, so a big cheese wheel, and they start it at the top of a rather steep hill and they roll the cheese down and the contestants run afterwards and the first one down the hill wins the a wheel of cheese. Uh, so never heard of that one before. Um, and another one I hadn't heard of was underwater hockey. It's just like it sounds. It's like hockey only it's played underwater. Um, I'm not sure the point of it, but they have little hockey sticks and a puck that sits at the bottom of the pool. So at any rate, um, the one that I thought was the most strange and the most obscure was called wife carrying. Wife carrying. It originated in Finland. And the sport of wife carrying is actually when a husband carries his wife through an obstacle course. The couple with the best time through the obstacle course is the winning uh, couple. One last one I, I came across was competitive shin kicking. Now this is self-explanatory. It's when two contestants uh, kick each other in the shin until one falls down and the winner is the one who is standing. So the things we do to stay active are kind of, kind of different, kind of different. In his prayer, Moses tells us how God was active. Moses reveals that as the Egyptians pursued the Israelites, God actively protected them. And God did so, among other ways, by providing a path for them across the sea. I want you to listen to the description of this from Moses' prayer. It's verse 8 I'm sharing with you, the first part. It says, as the blast of your nostrils, the water, at the blast of your nostrils, the water piled up, the floods stood in a heap. Yeah, the words that jumped out there, that blast of the nostril. And I thought about that. Is it just me or does this sound like God's divine sneeze here? Isn't that something? It's amazing wording. And did you notice the waters are described as being piled up and standing on a heap? The point is that God's power was made visible and it was active. And Moses responded to God's power in this prayer. He says, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? Moses asked that question, who is like you, God? And of course, he knows the answer to the question. He knows that no one is like God. As I think about this prayer, I realize that this may be a prayer of Moses, but it's meant for you too. I mean, we too can rejoice in 
God who is present and active. The cross of Jesus proclaims the good news that no one is like our God. May the Lord bless and keep you in the knowledge that God is present and active through Jesus. Let's pray. Merciful, gracious God, again we rejoice and give thanks in the opportunity to gather and hear your word and grow through it because of it, by it. And as we begin the series looking at, at some of the prayers um, and we stop today to, to reflect on the prayer of Moses, I ask that you'd remind us in our own prayer life to, to see the, the joy that it is to be able to call upon you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Even in the wilderness, God, you are with us. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing to, and strength to all who suffer. Direct the worlds and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Lord, in the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Lord, for this congregation, we lift our people into your care. For those that are in your need of healing, Lord, we lift into your care, including Neil Boak, as he recovers from a stroke. For Jack Simon, Lord, as he recovers from an infection, Lord, and that you would grant him healing from pain. For Crystal Jekyll, who is hospitalized with heart and lung issues, and for Pat Seberg, Lord, that you'd provide continued healing for her. Lord, for San Luca, pastor in our circuit, as his wife undergoes chemotherapy, Lord, that you would bring healing to his family, Lord, and that you would bring her through these waters, Lord, stronger and more reliant on you. For Fred Morundi, Lord, that you provide healing and care for him, and for Linda Tremaine as well, Lord, that you provide guidance, healing, Lord, and just comfort. 
For Dave Dickerman, we thank you, Lord, that you brought him home, and we pray for continued healing, Lord, and for Betty, his wife, that you would give her strength and rest as well. Lord, for the members of our community that mourn loss, including Katie Bachman, as she mourns the passing of her sister, Lord, that you would strengthen her sister's family, Lord, that you provide your goodness and your grace and healing there as well. Lord, for our leadership here at Hope, and Lord, specifically for Pastor Richard and his family, as he considers a call to a new church, or that you provide your will, Lord, your wisdom, and Lord, that for us as a congregation, we recognize it is always your will that we pray for and not ours. Lord, in baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. And Lord, we pray that for us and for those that we've lifted in prayer today, or that you would bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. We entrust ourselves to you, O Lord, and all of our prayers to you, faithful God, through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.